Robert Malle Stevens, 1886, 19, uh, 1945. Um, so we read here from Wikipedia, of course, <clears throat> Robert Malle Stevens, born on March 24th. I regret that we are one day later, but still, I don't think too many people paid homage to Robert Malle Stevens. Let's read about him. So born yesterday, but in 1886, he was one year older than Le Corbusier, was an influential French architect and designer. Uh, and uh, if this doesn't say enough, and he doesn't, we we'll read more. <clears throat> Malais Stevens was born in Paris in a house called Maison Lafitte, designed by Francois Mansart in the 17th century. By the way, the word Mansard comes from Francois Mansart. His father, uh, Mansard in Romanian, his father and his grandfather were art collectors in Paris and Brussels. He received his formal training at the Ecole Spéciale d'Architecture in Paris, during which he wrote uh, Gerand about the relationships between the different forms of art. So he was a privileged person, you know, with a father and grandfather, art collectors in Paris and Brussels, and uh, immersed in an artistic environment. In 1924, Malle Stevens published a magazine called La Gazette de, de Set Art, and at the same time, with the help of uh, Ricciotto Canudo, founded the Club des Amis du uh, Setiem Art at a Paris Street in the 16th ad, arrondissement, Rue Malle Stevens, was built by him in the 1920s and has on it six houses designed by him. A portfolio of 32 of Malay Stevens designs was published under the title uh, Une Cité Moderne in 1922, just as a, you know, a guiding mark or a reference. Villa Savoie by Le Corbusier was built in 1928. So this was published in 1922, in addition to designing shops, factories, a fire station in Paris, apartment buildings, private homes and interiors, he was one of the first architects to show an interest in cinema. <clears throat> so again and again, we saw William Morris <clears throat> with uh, an interest in various fields. We saw Hassan Fatih being an amateur musician. Uh, we see now, besides being also an engineer, he designed film sets. I'm talking uh, with Malle Stevens. He designed film sets and his design for Marcel Lerbier, silence film, Land Human, <laughs> interesting title, Land Human from 1924 is considered a masterpiece. Why is it that so people, uh, at least in our country, but not only in our country, talk about him? Well, I don't know. In 1929, surrealist photographer and filmmaker Man Ray, who was also a friend of uh, Constantin Brunkush, made a film inspired by his design for the buildings named Villa Noailles, entitled Les Mysteries of the Chateau de De. During his career, he has uh, assembled a team of artisans and craftspeople who worked with him, interior designers, sculptors, master glazers, lighting specialists, and iron smiths. An example of his collaborative nature is provide with, provided by the Union des Artistes Modernes, UAM, formed in, formed in 1929 by a group of 25 dissidents of the Société des Artistes Décorateurs, SAD, and presided over by Robert. I love this again. He was a revolutionary. He had, uh, you know, iconoclastic views. He had uh, social concerns. He was, uh, you know, an ardent supporter of art and artists, and he brought them together. Bravo to him. Here was the man. We talked about uh, Hassan Fatih being an aristocrat. Well, Robert uh, Malle Stevens was an aristocrat himself, as you can see yourself, and not just because of the, you know, rather excessive in terms of dimension uh, and uh, handkerchief here, and uh, you know, on, on his coat. But it's a, it's a great picture, I think, you know, he's a man of privilege. Uh, and uh, I love authenticity in whatever form it, uh, it manifests itself. 
he was an interesting man, an interesting architect. And, uh, you know, I think we need, we need such architects who are cultural figures, who are filmmakers, writers, musicians, engineers, theologians, biologists, anthropologists, philosophers. I, I think, I think uh, uh, you know, uh, those who say that uh, the architect might, might just as well have another job uh, is right. Like Yanis Xenakis, who was not an architect, but uh, who worked for 11 years for Le Corbusier, born in Brahila, and it was him who said, it will benefit the architect a lot to also do something else, to have a second job in a very different field. I would say so, yes. Because, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how much you love architecture, uh, to be trapped within, exclusively within architecture is not a good thing. Drawings, because it could become, uh, you know, uh, monotheism with all its trappings. Drawings, some drawings, and yes, they, they you know, they, they are reflective of the time he lived in, uh, but uh, they are skillfully done and, uh, you know, uh, in an art deco kind of way, they show, uh, you know, uh, subtlety, you know, subtleness, graphic subtleness. They are, <clears throat> You know, there are drawings which you could easily, you know, place, uh, you know, under glass and uh, then uh, hang, uh, hang them on a wall. You know, the, these are renderings done in his specific way, not in a commercial way. Robert Malle Stevens. And again, he was a modern architect, just like, but in a different way, Hassan Fatih. But did he reject ornament? No, he didn't. It's right here and it's right here. And, uh, you know, he lived and worked at a time when modernism uh, had uh, its uh, wings uh, wide open. Even here, there, is, uh, there are touches of ornamentation. Well, no, discrete, but they exist. Pavillon de Sport. Robert Malet Stevens. A bridge. Even on a bridge you see a touch of the subjectivity we call ornamentation. And here as well, nothing wrong with it. So you, you can tell there is a unity, uh, you know, a graphic uh, unity between his uh, illustrations or renderings. Now we, we go to built works. Villa Paul Poiret, 1921, 1923, completed uh, in, uh, anyway, in 1932. I don't know why it was it. Maybe the project was done between 1921 and 1923. It's an excellent building, uh, you know, and um, I mean, look just at this, uh, this double stairs here, you know, just this corner, in itself is uh, eventful architecturally. It's, it's an opulent villa, yes, but uh, I mean, since I since I mentioned Villa Savoie, which was built well approximately at the same time, 1928, and which is much more famous than this building, but is this building inferior to Villa Savoie? I mean, if you didn't know that Villa Savoie was such a manifesto made by the, the incredible uh, Le Corbusier, if you didn't know that, and if you just looked at the building, and you look at this building, is this building inferior? 
I don't know, maybe it's not so radical, but uh, it has a, so a certain wisdom compared to Villa Savoie, which crafted its first floor because of the radius uh, uh, car needs in order to go around the building and so on. Uh, around the building, but also underneath the building, which uh, if you had uh, an intoxicated uh, driver, almost surely uh, the car would have hit uh, those uh, narrow columns that support the second floor. Anyway, this is, uh, this is a building by, uh, by uh, um, Robert Male Stevens, and um, I think it's a good building, even when it is uh, affected by the elements and by, by the passage of time, it's still a good building. And even if we, it is ruined here, as it appears to be, it's still a good building. And by the way, again, of Villa Savoie, it was in a ruined state itself. In fact, the malicious at the time, Bernard Jumi, put it eloquently when he said the most architectural thing about this villa, he referred to Villa Savoie, is its state of, state of decay. He was malicious, of course. Any rebellious uh, son, uh, you know, uh, makes um, acid uh, statements about the father. Now, of course, the real father of um, Bernard Schum was not Le Corbusier. I'm talking about in you know, a symbolic or metaphorical sense. Now, the building was refurbished by uh, Robert uh, Male Stevens. Um, I still like, uh, well, I like in general <clears throat> all pictures because I am a nostalgic soul. Everything is designed, of course. Robert Male Stevens. Now, Villa Noir, 1923, 1928. Another good building by uh, Robert Male Stevens. Interesting, this uh, <clears throat> swimming pool inside the, you know, inside the building. And uh, even more interesting is the ceiling above the, above the swimming pool. And also look at this um, swing here, you know, uh, a playful spirit. And we need playfulness. Work without play is, uh, again, like a tree without leaves and, and flowers. It's just a bore. An interesting idea. Did you see this before? I did. not This is the first time I see it. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there are other works with such, with such an idea. But it's an interesting idea. To swing over the water. Now, I, I think the swimming pool here is gone. Uh, doesn't seem this building is lived in. If we compare these interiors with the interiors of the houses that uh, Hassan Fatih built, well, some of them, you know, uh, here we, we, we can tell actually that, um, you know, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but no, maybe it's a museum now and you have a few things and otherwise, you know, you don't see flowers, books, you don't hear music, uh, you don't see sleepers on the floor and other things that have to do with life as, as lived. Villa Cavrois in Croix. This is a large building. I mean, it's a villa, but uh, it could have been uh, something else. Robert Male Stevens. This is French, but, but it could have been also in the Netherlands. There is something of, uh, of uh, Dutch architecture, you know, like Dudok, for example. It's 
Some people live well, as we can see. I mean, you know, this is a villa, but uh, you know, you can house here easily, you know, five or even 10 families. And not just Ukrainians, who are Ukrainians. It's an excellent building, we have to confess. How come that this architect also had so-called had time for cinema, you know, with his big interest in film? Because, you know, there is a conjunction of uh, interests, uh, you know, uh, an architect uh, pendulates between various fields and the re relationship between architecture and film is potentially very fruitful for both actually. Architecture is, uh, is, in fact, present in so much uh, film. And film could also influence uh, significantly the conception of space, even the editing of space, and even more the editing of the sequences of space that is of time, the time implied in, 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 in uh, traveling or walking or living in the spaces. This is an, uh, a good building, very good building by Robert Malé Stevens. Uh, I know that I'm not uh, an adequate critic or theoretician. I'm, I'm actually not, uh, you know, because you, you know, if you are a theoretician or a critic, uh, you say more than just, I like this building or it's a good building. But I make these presentations not so much as, uh, you know, theories or uh, informational uh, material, Rather, I hope, I hope, this is my hope, they are inspirational. Because if you want to learn more, you go to the website, you go to Wikipedia, you go to Google Images, and you can find plenty of materials. You, and you can uh, investigate what you are interested in. I'm just trying to pay homage to some architects. Uh, some of them, if not many of them, uh, rather forgotten like Robert Male Stevens. Who talks about Robert Male Stevens? Like Bernard Chumi told me, you know, you had a presentation about Sebastiano Serlio. Nobody talks about Sebastian Serlio the, these days. So it's important to remember architects who, just like us now, but in other times, you know, had dreams just like you had, just like I have, some built, some didn't. It's important to remember them to situate ourselves on the spiral of time together with them. It's important, I think. You feel less alone. In my opinion, it's inspirational to see the work of, you know, Male Stevens uh, or, to, or, or the work of uh, Hassan Fatih or the work of William Morris, to mention just the ones, uh, the ones I talked about today. And this is an important building. This should be studied in schools. It should be talked about, it should be analyzed. You know, look at this staircase. Is it a staircase uh, that leaves you indifferent? I don't think so. Interesting, you know, uh, graphically or aesthetically, the connection between the flow of steps here and this piece of uh, furniture here. You know, it's like uh, there is a correspondence, a dialogue between them, a visual, visual dialogue. Well, I guess any building at one moment, moment or in some periods of life, uh, if, of its life, uh, go, uh, go through such, uh, you know, uh, neglect, even masterpieces, because I think this, this building is a masterpiece.
Robert Murray Stevens. When life becomes a museum, um, a certain sad sadness is, I think, unavoidable. At one point, you know, you know, the kitchen was full of life. You know, the smell of food, of cooking, people sitting at the table, narrow that table, isn't it? Especially when you expect uh, plates on both sides, or maybe it opened, uh, you know, it, uh, it had the ability to become wider. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what can we say? Now we arrive, I think this is the last uh, portion of this uh, presentation on Robert uh, Male Stevens. He created six buildings on a, on a street, on a rue, which bears its name. Now it's called Rue Male Stevens. I don't know if when, when he built these buildings there, if it was called the same way. It's possible, I don't know. This is the street you know, on a private street, perhaps. And he built six buildings on this street in Paris, not a little thing. I mean, you know, to, 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 to build uh, six buildings on a street, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's quite something. And these are not, uh, you know, social housing or uh, block of, blocks of flats, they are private residences. They're all a little bit different, so there is multiplicity in unity. The unity is generated by the, the fact that he was the architect who designed all of them. Well, the multiplicity derives from the fact that, you know, he didn't want to repeat himself um, too explicitly. Robert Malé Stevens. When you are in Paris, maybe you'll think of uh, paying a visit to this street. I'm sure you'll find it. I, I, I just uh, I just had this thought, you know, did Brinkus by 1927 already create some uh, models for his uh, endless column? Because here there is something of, of that, you know, and it's it's possible that I don't know. It was in the air in a way. Of course, this is something very different, but formally it has. Uh, you know, uh, some kind of a growing, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, inner activity, how to describe it.
Yes, he, he built this for, I think there were two brothers, these uh, sculptors. Uh, I think uh, this, uh, this house was, uh, was theirs. Some artists were, were located on this street. I guess some well-to-do, you know, artists, not every, not, not every artist in Paris was poor. Nor uh, every artist in Paris had a radicalism of Constantin Brancusch to live the way he did. I actually admire Brancusch for uh, choosing a radical way of, of life. Uh, he didn't want, uh, he could have because he became very successful and probably rich, but he never gave up his uh, adobe, so to speak. And maybe you know Brancusch. Uh, identified himself with Milarepa, the great uh, uh, Persian uh, poet who lived in a cave, actually. So, uh, but <laughs> if I am allowed to be a little bit malicious, I would say that uh, Milarepa didn't uh, play golf like uh, Brancusch did in his later years. Anyway, uh, uh, pictures of the buildings. So, at the time when they were built, Robert Male Stevens. So this is an architecture from 1920s, 1930s, almost 100 years ago. And the car shows it. The opening, I don't know. Yeah, the architect is probably here. I think this is uh, Robert Male Stevens. And today, that's where the sculptors lived. A picturesque modernist um, street and buildings. So again, this street was, uh, this building, these buildings were built one year before Villa Savoie by Le Corbusier. So Le Corbusier was not the only modernist in, in the world and not the only modernist in France or in Paris, as you can see. Now we cannot say here that, uh, you know, Robert Male Stevens inspired himself from uh, the architecture of Le Corbusier. It was something in the air perhaps, but of course, the impact of Le Corbusier was very powerful and with his, uh, you know, uh, many writings, I think he published four, uh, 18 books. Uh, he was quite able to promote his cause very intensely. I'm talking about Le Corbusier. Now, Villa de Frères Martel, these were, uh, a little bit confused because I don't know if the whole building was uh, for these two brothers. One of them was an artist, nor both, I think, sculptors. This is a rendering of the villa. It looks much more ample. Anyway, very comfortable uh, lodgings, as you can see. Some people live well. What else can I say?
I guess this is his own house, Vira Male Stevens. But now uh, I don't know why I don't have a picture of it. I guess I couldn't identify it. Now a, a garage. Uh, talking about garages, I was so happy that uh, Hassan Fati didn't have garages, but here is a garage, an Alfa Romeo garage in Paris. Like Auguste Perret, who also built a famous garage. Here we have a garage by Robert uh, Malay Stevens. And for Alfa Romeo, indeed, easily, um, you know, readable. But what we see inside is more than a garage. I mean, you know, this interior could have been, uh, I don't know, it could be, it could have been, uh, you know, a futurist building uh, both in the United States and Japan, not just in Paris. A house for Louis Barrier, Square Vergen, Vergen in Paris. Another building, other lot of lots of glass, but look, art is incorporated into the building. There is opulence here. This is not a house for a proletarian and his family now. Art Deco and Modernism. Caserne Pompier is a fire station, 1935. Well, this is how it is today, and this is how the project looked like. I don't know if they refurbished it or not, or not. A fire station. Robert Malet Stevens. Paris. And, you know, these are the, for the firemen. But at that time, you know, of course, such uh, almost ridiculously looking, uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicles for uh, extinguishing fire uh, would be totally inadequate for our time. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I mean, okay, here, here we come, you know. Uh, coming closer to the truth of our time. I mean, what would you do with such things, you know, if a skyscraper burns? <laughs> Dreamers, immeuble de rapport de la rue Mecha, uh, a block, block of flats, an apartment building, we are approaching the end of this presentation, and I, I confess I'm a little bit tired after three, three presentations. I should avoid days when, uh, when there are so many people to pay homages to. That's it. So let's wish him happy birthday for yesterday, and I thank you for being here today. <laughs>